All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, we just got done clearing out the, or not clearing out, but traveling through the giant carps layer, and we're going to be pushing into here. All right, so this is going to kind of clear up the confusion in the story. Uh, these mist nobles in here have been eating the bodies of the people that they bring in from Mibu Village, right? And they do that in order to preserve their youth. Uh, you can come over here and open up this door. Uh, I started recording for about 30 seconds and realized my mic wasn't working, so I went ahead and just restarted from that uh, sculpture, but this is all we've seen so far. Once you kill them, uh, when you rest and come back, you'll see this dialogue. Pretty messed up. I mean, she just really wants her dad back, but unfortunately, it's too late for that. So we are going to step out here, and I'm going to show you how to get to the the second carp vendor. So you're going to jump around this way, and you're going to jump up, grapple up, and just sprint through. You don't have to kill the geckos if you don't want to. It's not really a big deal. You'll notice the geckos are a different color. Uh, they have a different a different ability, they don't poison you, they do something else. So you're gonna jump down here, rest at this statue. Just to make sure you pick it up and can fast travel and reset all the enemies. And then you're gonna talk to this guy. Alright, so this is the second carp vendor and you can see he sells some pretty good items as well as the left mask fragment that we're gonna need. So, uh, it's really really good for noon game plus not really needed for uh your regular playthrough of the game but what we're going to pick up is his lapis lazula and we're going to talk So this is the truly precious bait. If bait has hair, you know it's something truly special. The Fountainhead Palace Noble and the Pot is obsessed with becoming one with the Master. Present the bait to the Master of the Great Carp. Offer it earnestly but quietly so no one knows. Alright, so that's all we have to really do with him. We're going to go ahead and head on back to the palace grounds all right so from here again she she kind of murdered all of these guys so we don't have to worry about them anymore the goal is eventually we are going to progress our way over to the bottom area there. Uh, but first we're going to clear this way. You can see there is where the the guys come from um, when they bring them over here to Fountainhead Palace. And you can see the remnant here is Ashura Sekiro. That's the outfit you get for completing the Ashura quest. Got a gourd seed, which is always nice. We'll give that to Emma later on. Uh, 
And from here, we are going to grapple up, grapple up. Now, as you take this path, uh, you're going to start seeing lightning. That is where the next boss is. So what we're going to do is we're going to run up this path, get the... Uh, get the sculpture idol and then we'll just fast travel back down to the bottom and clear out the rest of the area before proceeding to the final boss in this area this way we don't have to deal with the the guys oh should have rested alright so now we're just gonna run away cause I don't feel like fighting these guys But you can see the final boss fight is going to involve a fair amount of lightning because all those dudes are really heavy on the lightning. Alright, so let's make sure we clear out all the items. I think there's one under the waterfall, yep. Soul Balloon. Anything else? Nope. Keep jumping back. Alright, so let's go ahead and head back to... Come on. Oh man, I missed it. You gotta hit that grapple point up top. It's kind of a tough jump. Let's see if we can get it. There we go. Now from here, we're going to be completing the quest line with the giant carp. So, now you can kind of choose which pot bro that you're going to uh, help out. You don't ha you you can either choose the one that we just met, or you can choose the one back at uh, Harada Village or Harada Estates. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, now, if you remember, the girl said her father became a noble, and he was obsessed with uh, the giant carp, so he's going to be down there doing... He's going to be basically in charge of f taking care of it and feeding it. Um, and we are going to help rectify that situation. Jump across. It's always best to just clear the top of any building, um, especially before you start going down, kill the dog. Pick up the item. Nice sugar. And let's make sure that there's no enemies. I think there's another dog over here. All right. More dogs, we don't really have to worry too much about them. Hop on down. Alright, so at the end of this area, there's a guy that's going to be down there. Like I said, it's the father from the NPC we talked to. He's basically in charge of feeding the giant carp, so we're going to go ahead and rest. And we should be able to get through the the main boss fight in this area, either this episode or next episode, because I might go ahead and just clear underwater. So you got to ring the bell in order to feed the fish here. So now you can give the fish normal bait and it will come up or you can give it the precious bait or you can give it the most precious bait. So we're going to select the truly for noble Komori's bait, which is the pot bro here. 
We're gonna go ahead and give the fish that. And he's gonna swim away. Alright, so we get the treasure carp scale. So I gotta feed the fish in moderation. Alright, so that's gonna pretty much conclude the giant carp part of the quest. Um, basically, we can travel back and talk to Pot Bro again after we rest and reset. Make sure we picked up all the items from over here. We did. All right. And we'll head back. Near the Pot Noble. All right, so we got a Gourd Seed that we got to give to Emma. But we won't need that for the final boss here. So, go ahead and... This guy gives us uh, another Lapis Lazuli Light. And that is the treasure that he was talking about giving us for completing his side quest. So, right now we're going to travel back to the Dilapidated Temple. Make sure we spend all the gold that we got before we go into a boss fight just in case. Upgrade. And now we can do some of the bigger upgrades. So, uh, we are missing fulminated mercury for this one, which is a good one. But we are good to go for the piercing. And yeah, so we just need to start getting fulminated mercury. We can start rounding some of these out. So we're missing Malcontent's Ring. Golden Vortex. And we'll do the Send Throw. Send Throw is actually really, really strong if you have a lot of gold. It's basically a prosthetic tool that throws your money. And the more money you have, the stronger it is. And we will head back to the palace. And we'll go ahead and clear the the lake so underneath the lake there's a headless enemy there's a bunch of carps a bunch of treasure and stuff uh, fighting the headless underwater is not always fun let's see if he responds when we ring the bell alright so if you notice he doesn't come back after you ring the bell no one knows why well uh, we know why but uh, the bait actually killed him And there's nothing we can do, so. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and dive. Now we don't have to worry about the giant carp. Let's go ahead and go treasure hunting. More precious bait. There's a group of carp that we don't really want to mess with. You can actually hide in the underwater grass and stuff. It's pretty cool. Kind of keeps you hidden from the fish that are swimming around. This would be what is left of the Fountainhead Palace as it's been destroyed and you can tell that uh, it's kind of in a decline as far as how nice it was rumored to be. Uh, the nobles have really kind of lost their, their cool Or bait. You can tell people just been kind of throwing bait into the water. Alright, so here's the headless enemy. Um, we're going to go ahead and break contact with him because I didn't mean to engage him quite, quite yet. Just swim right up. Alright, cool. So with the headless enemy, same things are going to apply. 
going to want to make sure that you have all your terror breaking options as well as your where is it the model purple gourd all right so we are going to pop our purple gourd and get ready to handle this the old-fashioned way because we can't use confetti underwater Oh man, let's go handle this one. Uh, the underwater headless are much more difficult. I might actually just save clearing the underwater headless for a, another video. Just because I don't feel like going through the process of dying to them 15 times. Alright, so yeah, I'll save that for another video. We'll, we'll do a clearing of the mini bosses before we finish the game. But yeah, there's two. There's the double headless down there, super annoying to deal with, and uh, you can't use your normal sprinting around kind of tactics because you're underwater. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and round off the Fountainhead Palace now. You can see there is a shrine here that you can pray to, and basically once you pray here, you're gonna be transported to another area in the game. Alright, so we're going to be looking at the Divine Dragon here. Um, not a hard boss fight by any means, but it's kind of a, a set piece boss where the mechanics itself aren't very difficult, but it looks cool as fuck to do. This is where the resurrection and immortality powers come from in general, and you can see that the tree itself looks dead. And there is part one of the boss. So we're going to run up, do our thing, and more of them are going to spawn. Uh, these enemies are super easy to deal with. And as you kill one, you'll see that they do it, build up poison, and the trees are going to start spawning. Once the trees spawn, you're going to go ahead and jump down on them, and it's going to give you a mechanic that lets you kill like 10 of them at once. So utilize that just to kind of speed things along. Like I said, it's not really a, a mechanical fight. It's more of a, a set-piece fight. So way more efficient to utilize the tree. Try to get them to spawn close to the tree. Wait till they show up a little bit closer, and let's try to get one. There we go. The black ones uh, don't give you any credit for the health of the boss. So try to focus on killing the, the white dragon. There we go. All right, and that should be it. All right, so now the real boss fight is going to start. Again, not a difficult boss fight. Just focus on a few pairing situations and then uh, be very good with your lightning reflection.
Really don't feel like dealing with the headless right now. Had a long night and I haven't fought those underwater headlesses since my first playthrough. All right, so he's gonna knock you back. We're gonna go ahead and heal up because we are poisoned right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop a grassy. All right, so this is where you need to be ready to parry. Caught me healing. Gotta jump over these. And basically what you're gonna do is be jumping tree to tree. The one that has the lightning on it, you're gonna send that lightning back towards the boss, so. Boom. Just takes about five or six of them to completely kill the boss. But just get ready to deflect whenever he does these big slams and then be ready to jump over him whenever he does the sweeping attacks. Don't miss the reversal and it should be fine. You can parry this boss down all the way. Um, although it is difficult and it doesn't reward you for doing so. So don't really think too much about it because you can't get the kill off of parrying him down. You can only get the kill from triggering him with the lightning. All right, so his posture is almost completely broken. Again, we're just gonna get ready to parry. He's gonna kind of go into like a crazy, uh, uh, this one's gonna be. All right, and one more should do it. Uh, if you notice, he only has one hand. Originally, he did have more than one hand. He had both hands. And it's kind of symbolic of the Sakura tree that Owl Father cut the, the branch off of. Also could be symbolic of Sekiro losing his hand. Um, no one has really figured out exactly why he's missing an arm and what it represents. Oh. That was him going crazy. Now the trees are back and we're just gonna find the one with lightning which is right in front of us. There we go. And he is down so we're gonna run up. Pretty cool boss fight. Again, not a difficult one by any means but gonna run up here and you're gonna get that death blow on him. And if you remember when we picked up the Mortal Blade itself, the name of the Mortal Blade was actually the Gracious Gift of Tears. So we did not kill the dragon here. We just cut it to take the tears from it. It's one of the items that Kuro needs. But this is the reason why we can deal with uh, undead or undying enemies with the Mortal Blade. It's the only blade that can damage the Divine Dragon. Alright, so now that's the Divine Dragon down. Ancient Deity of the Ever Blossom. Uh, we got the Divine Dragon's Tears. The body of the Divine Dragon is eternal and its tears once shed will maintain their form and moisture in perpetuity. Should one of the Dragon's Heritage partake of the Dragon's Tears, Immortal Severance will be reified. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and rest. And in the next episode, we'll go ahead and start progressing the story a little bit more. Um, and we'll deal with what looks like Ishin and Emma over there. All right, catch you on the next episode.